Uh, one thing that caught me off guard yesterday was a wall-mounted, I suppose a hot water dispenser for coffee cups, so basically the kind of thing you find in a cafeteria. It was a very old unit with copper tanks and everything in it, and I was about to basically just start ripping it apart with a 9-inch grinder, and I realised there are a couple of these in it. These are mercury tilt switches for controlling heating and flow of water in the tanks. There's an upper and lower tank in these units. And to try and to break one of these and just scatter mercury everywhere can be quite deadly, or at least not deadly, uh, can have serious health effects. Mercury seriously messes with your brain when it gets in there. So I've allocated these for hazmat disposal. I don't have any use for them, and even if I did have any a use for them, they're way too fragile and toxic to have around. I just thought I'd bring this to people's attention to be wary of what they're tearing apart and don't just go smashing it and bashing it with a sledgehammer. I honestly didn't expect to find such big mercury switches inside a uh, common water heater. Likewise, things like these lithium-ion batteries should never be dismantled or incinerated. I've actually got plastic tubs dedicated just to battery scrap and mercury scrap, including these cold cathode photocopier lamps and LCD panels, which also have a cold cathode lamp inside the top. They all contain a certain degree of mercury. Some old black and white cathode ray tube television screens actually contain a bit of mercury vapour as well. I realise these could have certain ap applications, but basically it's no substitute for just a micro switch with a pendulum weight on it. They're actually quite heavy too, there's a fair amount of mercury in each one of them. I guess the most obvious hazard of uh, electronics recycling and hobbies is lead. Another reason to wash your hands after you've done handling printed circuits like this one, or basically any printed circuit board. Likewise, if you've been soldering or working with lead, it's not the nicest thing to have creep up on you late in life. I know after my years of ripping stuff apart, incinerating it, and just demolishing it as a kid's one day going to catch up to me in the form of lead or arsenic poisoning. Arsenic's another one which is contained inside a lot of ICs. It's a part of the etching process for the microchip. And I've met a number of electronics recyclers who actually break these packages down for the copper backing plates and pins. And in doing so, they turn the little silicon wafers into airborne dust, a lot of which they breathe in. They don't wear respirators. And as a result, they expose themselves to a lot of arsenic and silicon and numerous other nasty little chemicals. Another innocent looking device is this central heating wall thermostat. Uh, probably found in most homes around Australia now. I mean, Brivus is a pretty major manufacturer. They've all gone over to di digital controls now, but these old-fashioned central heating thermostats are everywhere. And inside is our good old friend Mercury. That little tilt switch is operated by the coil inside here, which expands as it heats up, and it rotates that bulb to close the contacts and make heat, and then retract it forwards to open the contact and shut the heater off. They're a pretty neat little gadget. I keep this one on the shelf as a spare part, but I should always be treated with care since that little bulb contains some rather nasty shit. I guess the only real use for a mercury switch would be to just mount it deep in the cabinet of a piece of equipment that I suppose if you don't want to get running when it gets knocked over the, con the mercury switch can break the contacts and shut the machine down before it hits the floor like an oxyhydro generator if it were to be knocked over it would cause all sorts of problems and well you want it to shut off before it even hits the floor so a mer mercury switch like the bigger ones I had in this box would be enough to keep the contactors closed when it's upright but 
open the contact is it should it get shunted or knocked over. It's about the only use I can think of for a mercury tilt switch.